Baller Nation, it's Carmen Roxana, and we're back with more Baller Alert news. But before we get started, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel to stay up on the latest in entertainment news and more. Netflix was pretty strategic with the release date of their latest docuseries, Killer Inside, The Mind of Aaron Hernandez, especially with the NFL championship right around the corner. Aaron Hernandez died three years ago while serving a life sentence for murder and forever changed the NFL and Pat fans. Going from a happy-go-lucky kid to a millionaire NFL superstar to a convicted murderer, the three-part doc lays it all out and culminates Hernandez's whole life story with commentary from family, friends, teammates, and anyone who could attest to the character of Aaron J. Hernandez. For starters, the homosexuality accusations of days past were definitely at the forefront of the series. Romantic involvement with men was allegedly part of Hernandez's life from an early age. His brother said in the doc that Aaron had been molested by their babysitter and childhood friend and high school quarterback Sansusi explained their on and off relationship from seventh grade to his junior year of high school. Me and Aaron experimented and I'll be honest, we continued because we probably enjoyed it, Sansusi says. In school, there weren't a lot of kids that were out of the closet. And the few that were, I was looking at them like, what a homo. Here I am, I'm the football player. I was in such denial because I was an athlete. You mean to tell me that the quarterback and tight end were gay? They sleep with other men? Nah, it doesn't sit right. The embedded stigma Hernandez had for homosexuality and having to hide his sexual preference for his persona and career came largely from a large influence in his life as a child, his father. Both Aaron and Sansusi's fathers were against homosexuality in their youth, so they became accustomed to living life as straight men into adulthood and having to suppress their true sexual identities. Hernandez even reportedly had a lover in prison. His sexual involvement with men came to light in a CNN report that outed the former NFL star, and he was mocked by a Boston sports radio talk show. Two days later, he was found dead, hanging in his jail cell. Outside of Hernandez's sexuality, the docuseries also highlighted the murders of Odin Lloyd, Aaron's future brother-in-law, and two Boston men, Safiro Furtado and Daniel Deabru. Aaron was eventually convicted of first-degree murder for the June 17, 2013 shooting death of Lloyd, but acquitted for the double shooting deaths of Furtado and Deabru, who were allegedly shot in traffic after a minor encounter with Hernandez in a local Boston club. One of the most compelling parts of the whole series was the inclusion of audio recorded phone calls from jail between Hernandez and associates, including his mother, fiance, friends, his agent, a beloved cousin, former teammates, and many more. The series also featured insight on the complicated relationship Aaron had with his famed father, Dennis Hernandez, how his father's sudden death impacted his life, struggles at the University of Florida, his lack of bonding with the New England teammates, and how a severe post-mortem diagnosis of CTE may have played a large role in why the rising NFL star's life took such a dramatic and tragic turn. The whole story is crazy, and definitely one of the most captivating sports docuseries since OJ Made in America. You can check out Killer Inside, The Mind of Aaron Hernandez on Netflix right now and come back to the comments and let us know what you think. And if you've been up on game and already caught the doc, what do you think? Let's talk about it. Drop your comments below. I'm Carmen Roxana, and until we meet again, thanks for watching Baller Alert News. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm out. Circulation of the photo inspired comments of disapproval from some fans, while others joked about Boosie becoming an honorary Kappa Alpha Psi member. Following the backlash, Boosie took to YouTube and found strolling videos of the Kappas and seemingly impressed, playfully began mimicking the moves on Instagram Live. 